Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from IsraelAutomation.com and welcome to another video of our course Kubernetes for Testers. And in this video, we are going to talk about deployments to create Selenium Hub. So basically, the whole idea of this video is to make you understand what deployments in Kubernetes is all about and what are the advantage of deployments. But we are not going to discuss really about the actual advantage of deployments, something like rolling updates and stuff. But in this video, we are going to make use of deployments of Kubernetes to create an Selenium Hub, but the actual benefits of performing a rolling updates and how deployments are really used in real time is something that we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos of this series. But as of now, today we are going to make use of deployments to create Selenium Hub. Just to be very, very clear, if you think of learning something about deployments, then probably this video is just going to show you the template of deployments and how we can deploy the Selenium Hub with a deployment like how we did the deployment of Selenium Hub with pods. That's what we're going to be discussing. But the actual essence of deployments is something that, that we should be knowing about is something we'll be discussing in our upcoming videos of this series. But as of now, just to align our lab of how we can create the Selenium grid setup, we are going to just talk about the deployment of Selenium Hub with the deployments in Kubernetes. Well, to make you even more understand about what deployment is, a deployment controller provides a declarative update for pods and replica set. So you describe a desired state in the deployment object and the deployment controller changes the actual state to the desired state at a controlled rate. You can define deployments to create new replica set or to remove existing deployments and adapt all their resources with the new deployments. That's what it is. So if you deploy and Selenium Hub with a specific version using deployments and if we need to change the Selenium Hub let's say the current version that we are going to deploy is version 3 and if version 4 is being released and if we need to perform a rolling update for the Selenium Hub using deployment it's much much easier. In case of pod it is very very harder because you need to completely destroy the pod and then you need to recreate one which is not the right way of doing it and that's not going to be happening in the real time with Kubernetes as well. So you should be using either deployments or replication controller to do it and the best way of doing it in real time is with the deployments where the application is being deployed in Kubernetes with the deployments and if there happens any changes in the application then with the rolling updates or the desired state change mechanism of deployments the application will be updated and deployments will create a new replica set by removing the existing deployments and adapt all their resources with the new deployment changes which is pretty cool and that's the power of deployments in kubernetes itself but again as i told you before we are going to be just discussing about the deployment of selenium hub with the deployments in this video let's start working there and understand how things work so for that i'm going to flip to my visual studio code ide all right, so now I'm in my Visual Studio Code IDE. And if you remember in our earlier video, we were discussing how we can make use of the service to connect our Selenium Hub from the external port that we have specified something like this. But again, we try to access the pods from the service as well, but not using the service.yaml file, but the service that we did by exposing our pod in the command line, which is not the right way of doing it. And we will never do that way. Rather, we will be doing only in this way of fashion, which is the more correct way in the real-time mechanism. Well, as that said, we are going to first start working with the deployments of Kubernetes, and then we are going to deploy the Selenium Hub that we have deployed something like this in the deployments, which is the right way of doing it. So we're not going to deploy the pods directly. We are going to deploy everything either with the deployments or with the replication controllers. We will never ever deploy the pod straight away like this, like a naked way. We would never do that. So the first one is deployment. So I'm just going to create a file called as deploy.yaml file. And then this YAML file, we are going to create the deployment. And again, as you know, once I start typing in the Visual Studio Code like DEP, you get the Kubernetes deployments template straight away. And once you hit enter, you can see that it brings you up all the different structure which is required for the deployments to happen. So you can see that it also shows you a cursor for the my apps that you need to change the name so once i do that once i delete it you can see that the cursor is just blinking there just asking me what i should type for again it's very very simple we just need to type this selenium hub you can see it changed everywhere right now which is pretty cool 
So you can see that this time it has the API version of apps slash v1. It's a little bit different from the pod. It is just v1, whereas in deployment it is apps slash v1. And the kind is deployment. And the metadata, it says pretty much exactly like how we did for the pods. Like it has a name of Selenium Hub there. And then there is a spec. It has a selector uh, which has a match label of Selenium Hub as the app. And then there is a template which tells you the metadata with the labels of app of Selenium Hub. This is a little bit different. Again, it is going to be something for the labels as well. And you'll understand why the selector match label is all about in our upcoming videos of this series. Don't worry about it yet. But yes, these are something that has a little bit dif different changes than compared to the parts itself. But this part that you can see in here, the spec, you don't even have to think about changing this. It is pretty much exactly the same thing that we saw in here. So I can either just copy the whole stuff from here, from the parts, and I can just replace this with the spec that I have created in the parts. So just give an indentation. That's what is required. And that's it. This is the only thing that I'm going to be doing. You can see that I just made these changes and this is the deployments template all about. So you can see with the deployments, the only thing that you need to remember is these things. If you are very familiar with the parts, then this is the only change that you should be worrying about. It has an API version of app slash v1 and kind is deployment. Metadata has the name of this a spec. Uh, so there are two spec in here. The one spec, it tells about the selector and the templates for the deployments. And the rest of the spec is going to be pretty much exactly the same like how we did for the parts. That's it. So this is the deployments in the Kubernetes all about. So I'm just going to save this guy and I'm going to go to the Windows terminal once again. And let me do this cube CTL get parts. So you can see we have the Selenium Hub running, which is nothing but the part. So I'm going to destroy the Selenium Hub because we don't really require this anymore. So I'm just going to say cube CTL of delete pod Selenium Hub. All right. So now the pod is being destroyed in here completely. So we don't have any access to this pod anymore. That's it. And once this is done, we can now deploy Selenium Hub with deployments that we just created. So create hyphen F of deploy.yaml. I'm just going to hit enter. Oops. Ah, there is one error now it comes. It says that error in validating the deployment.yaml file, the validation error happens in the deployment.spec, which means there is some intendation that we are currently missing than the actual recommendation. So basically the spec should not be sitting under the template as you can see in here. Rather, there is one more intendation required. It should be under the metadata's intendation. So basically it is coming under the templates, not along with the template. So this is not a separate thing altogether uh, like template. It is basically within the template. So the spec should be within the template. That's what it is saying. So basically this tool, the IDE is not a little bit intelligent enough in here to tell you that this particular spec is something which is away from this template. So you should have told that which is still fine for now. So I'm just going to hit enter once again and you can see that the deployment is now created, which is pretty cool. And now if I do a get parse, you can see this time we have a Selenium hub, but it also have a random name in here, which is okay because that's what is a deployment. It's going to change each and every time if you make any rolling updates and stuff and see the like the part that you created it has a direct name something like this like selenium hub but in here for the deployments it has a little bit different random number in the suffix all right so now we have the deployment so now i can just do a cube ctl describe of the deployment so once i hit enter you can see it tells me uh, what this deployment is all about it also shows you some other information in here this time that it is a selector of app. This one, it has a replicas of one desired state, one updated, one total, one available, zero unavailable. Uh, and then it also tells you the rolling update strategy. It has 25% of max unavailable and 25% of max surge, which is pretty cool, right? So it also tells you all the strategies and stuff. Don't worry about it yet. We're not going to be discussing any of these details in this video. Uh, because while we do the rolling updates of the Selenium grid in our upcoming videos of this series, we'll understand what it is actually. So all these are pretty good right now, which means we could able to access this particular deployments as well. That's what is the whole idea in here. Cool. So now if I just do 
uh, get parts and if I just do describe parts so I'm just going inside the deployments to get all the parts details so you can see it brings me up the parts detail of the deployment as well so there is uh, an IP address something like this and this is the IP address of our mini cube as you know uh, which is nothing but the node and then these are the details with like pretty much like how we saw in our earlier video while we created the parts right so this is what is the deployments creation is all about and now in order to access this particular deployment with the service what I'm going to do is I'm also going to run the service that we created in our earlier video so I'm going to quickly go in here and I'm going to do kubectl create hyphen f of the service.yaml file if you remember in our earlier video we did that so if you have not watched the earlier video please go ahead and watch that video because that video is something very very important to understand what the service.yaml file is all about i'm just going to hit enter and the service is being created as well so you can see describe as we see if you just do that it will tell you two services uh, one is the kubernetes actual service don't worry about it this is the service that we are talking about the selenium srv and you can see it has a port number of 30001 that we just specified the node port and then we could able to access them as well so if i go in here so instead of the random port number that we did with our last video this time i'm just going to put 30001 and if i hit enter there you go you can see we can able to access the selenium grid this time which is running using our specified port range in the service so basically now what's happening is the selenium grid is being now deployed via deployments of kubernetes and we are now talking with the deployments or the pods inside the deployments using the service that we just created so now we have two things in here so the one is the service we could see and then another one is the deployments so this one so we are now talking with this particular deployment now if I go to the uh, kubernetes dashboard and if I go to the parts you can see this is the part which has been coming if I go to the deployments this time you can see we have a deployment as well so if I go to the deployment uh, whatever you saw in the console you can see in here as well and this is the uh, replica set don't worry about it yet so if I go to the parts and if I go to the logs you can see the same selenium hub log coming in over here which is pretty cool right so now we could able to see that something great is happening in here with the deployments in our next video we'll see how we can connect our selenium nodes which is nothing but the selenium chrome node with the selenium grid using replication controllers of kubernetes and understand how things work and once again replication controller is something we have already discussed so a homework for you maybe just to read through the information that we discussed on the replication controller in our earlier video of our earlier section so that you'll have a clear understanding of what we'll be discussing in our next video thank you